Welcome everyone to the Side Drive Podcast. Welcome to our review of the Blue Green Vacations duels at Daytona. So the vacations are dueling. Yes. Uh, so um, a lot of intensity in these two races. Yes, I mean the duel is always fun to watch. You know, sometimes it's uh, kind of quiet and calm. Sometimes you get a lot of wrecks. So. Uh, this one, you know, we didn't have a lot of wrecks, but there was a lot of moving around and uh, real fun to watch. Yeah, so Stenhouse and Elliot was on the front row. Stenhouse locked in. All he needed to do is just to not crash uh, to keep the pole. Uh, but he's going for the the playoff points or the stage points that was awarded to yeah, the... Yeah, he had a very strong car. I mean, he can maneuver uh, really good in the draft and... Uh, I mean, it's going to be fun watching him in the 500. And he was showing up Roush for <laughs> just taking him out, you know. <laughs> so, uh, Sorensen, Sorez, and Fincham, they were all racing each other to get into the 500. Uh, they were the open cars, whereas uh, Justin Haley, he was already locked in. Yep. Uh, so, um, first off, it would be pretty intense. Uh, double file racing, sometimes uh, three wide. Uh, but it would take a while until that train would form. I believe it took 10 to 13 laps, somewhere in there. Uh, we had had that train, and then around lap 23, that would be when the Chevys would take their pit stops. And then lap 24, the Toyotas would go uh, the lap after. And so the uh, only problem on that one was Mark Truex Jr., Christopher Bell coming down pit road. Truex misses his pit stall. And Bell, his first ever cup pit stop, goes like this, accidentally spins Martin Truex Jr. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he really wasn't expecting Martin Truex to stop like that. And, uh, you know, Bell didn't make the rookie mistake. It was Truex. So, uh, yeah, Truex, he had to back up into his pit. I mean, I mean, these, these pit roads are kind of hard and trying to remember where your pit stalls are. And uh, as, that's when your spotter really comes in. In the place, they whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Toyotas have been having trouble with their pit stops. Yes. Worked out for Eric Jones, but did not for Martin Church Jr. Uh, so uh, then around lap 31, that's when the Fords decided that they was going to pit, uh, but uh, did there not was, work that way. There uh, was miscommunication. Miscommunication. They caught Daniel Suarez, uh, who at the moment was in the 500, uh, but uh, he was by himself. He needed draft help. The Fords came by, and he tried to get in line with them, trying to get in the middle so he wouldn't get, you know, lose them. Uh, but um, Ryan Blaney did not know that uh, the Fords were pitting, and I'm assuming Brad Kozlowski didn't know either because he, uh, he threw the hand out very late, and that uh, caused Soros to retaliate in terms of. You know, getting out of everyone's way, and then Blaney was like, "Oh crap, we're pitting!" And then they collided. Yeah, Suarez is trying to turn to the right, and and Blaney's already there. Uh, it's very unfortunate uh, for both of them, really. Uh, and it wasn't Blaney's fault. <laughs> yes, so Blaney he he took the blame, said it's his fault. You know, it, it took Suarez out of the Daytona 500, but I believe it was just a racing deal. Uh, you know, the spotters needed to communicate a little more uh, or somebody just tell somebody hey, we're we coming to pits. Yeah, whatever chat room they had uh, didn't work that time. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm going to hate for Suarez not be able to make it to the 500. But I bet Todd Gordon tried to talk to Joey and tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, work out all that now instead of Daytona 500 comes around and you wreck out of that. So, uh, Ryan Blaney, I know he finished very decent. So, uh, but he is going to get to a backup car, so he will have to start rear the field. That would be bad for you and Randy. Yes, but he he can still make it. I still believe he's going to win it. Uh, your fast picks come out tomorrow. Yes. You just let them know who you're picking. So, sorry. Oh wow. Sorry. Teaser. No. Nah. It's a little hint who okay, they're so picking. It's pretty bad when we record one, one video. Yeah, so, it, so. It's kind of hard to do it. So the pit stops after the yellow. Uh, Denny Hamlin had some sort of window net issue. I believe they got that all fixed. 
Clint Boyer, Busher, Blaney, and Joey Gase, they would be uh, penalized for pitting too soon. Uh, that was because of, uh, you know, Ryan Blaney and Suarez wrecking before everyone got down to pit, the pit lane. Uh, but Yeah, I believe the Fords would have been all right if, you know, that didn't happen because they was really on the bottom. They, they was really tucked up together and, and, and picking up some uh, time and speed on the rest of the field. Uh, if they went to pits, they have been four or five seconds ahead of them, probably. And then the rest of the race, it was a battle between Logano, Stenhouse, Austin Dillon. But with the help of Eric Almarola, uh, Joe Logano won the duel yet again. Yes. And I had him picked for the, the clash, and he ended up going to crash, and now he wins the duel. So he had to show you up. I'm like, dude, I picked you last week. You know, he's not just picking <laughs> Uh, but with that, uh, Reed Sorensen made it in uh, because Daniel Suarez, you know, all that happened with him. So, a uh, little gift there. A little gift there. So, uh, duel two, it'd be Alex Bowman and Jimmy Johnson on the front row. Uh, then uh, Kevin Harvick, he would uh, lead the line on the inside, take the lead. Uh, had some sort of a train, uh, not a full train, but it was a train. Yeah, um, Matt Benedetto was uh, really working with Kevin there and getting the Fords hooked together, and and uh, both of them come to the front pretty quick. Yeah, make your allies in the duels. Yeah, uh, but uh, Alex Bowman would lead the outside line on the top. Or that's where the outside line is, but <laughs> no, on on the top they uh, got back up to Harvick, and uh, I believe after like ten, fifteen laps, that's when the outside line really gets going. And uh, those power and numbers in the Chevys, that, that, that's what really won them the race. Yeah, it's really interesting to watch Daytona. Like one minute, the, the low line will be the, the fastest way around, and all of a sudden it moves to the top. So it's pretty interesting to watch the way that changes from time to time. It's just don't, you don't know who will win. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, then that's when the train would happen on lap 17. And then again on lap 23, that's when the Chevys w would pit. And then uh, lap 33, that's when the Fords and Toyotas would pit. Only two Toyotas with Kyle Busch and Eric Jones. They were like, we're going to have to hope that the Fords don't fake us out. Uh, and Kyle Busch led them down the pit road on lap 33. No, no major mishap like what happened in Duel 1. Uh, and so they had a large margin, a uh, large lead over the Chevrolets. Yeah, Kevin, he got ahead of Kyle Busch out of the pits. Uh, that really helped him keep keep the lead. And uh, once they kept that little train uh, of the Fords and the Toyotas together, you know, that was pretty quick. And I don't think the Chevrolets would, would actually come. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that's how it would have finished if it was not for J.J. Uh, Yaley hitting the wall. Uh, that was because... Uh, put a late block on Corey LaJoy and nothing LaJoy could have done but to turn him and, yep. and that will be the caution and then next restart Harvick led you know led the train on the bottom but uh, the power and numbers in the Chevrolets they got together worked really well uh, got William Byron up to the lead uh, but then Harvick and De Benedetto came back on the inside line uh, but that was disrupted because Jimmy Johnson uh, trying to make a block on Kurt Busch, and that caused Kurt Busch to make a little bit of contact with Harvick, and that could have been way more Yeah, that, dangerous. that really could have been really bad. Uh, it was like the big one in the making, uh, but Kevin Harvick uh, went below the yellow line to uh, dodge that, and uh, a lot of good driving by them. So uh, it's a really bad move. I just, I just don't see what Harvick really could, have, could have done in the last uh turn uh if they had anything for william byron yeah it could have been an exciting finish uh, but william byron won by a large margin because they were like three wide back there and uh yeah it was a cool paint scheme by william byron yeah. especially under the, under the lights uh first win in the cup series i know it's not you know a it's real, not actually counted it's not a real win-win but it's a it's yeah. a win for him. Yeah, and it broke the whole string of the Forge win the duels now. So Yeah, it would have been a, a complete repeat of yeah. uh, last year's duel if they would have let Harvick win. Uh, but uh, 
that have been pretty awesome. I, I like seeing that uh, Harvest car with the gray and the blue flames. And instead, there's another flame car. <laughs> <that one. laughs> flames versus flames. And now Toyota's going to win Daytona 500. Yeah, so. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I picked a forward to win. Yeah, uh, both races were pretty good. Uh, the first one was really intense, whereas the uh, the second one was you know, a little bit more pit strategy, and, and you know both of them can be enjoyable from time to time. And I'm um, just glad we didn't have a, a wreck fest. Uh, give us a little break from uh, from the clash because that was uh, that was just uh, a wreck fest of, of a clash. Yeah, I believe uh, Harvard said he could have you know done some blocking and and moved up to the high line every once in a while, but uh, you know that during the clash they didn't work out too good so i believe some of the drivers learned some stuff from the clash and and some didn't <laughs> <laughs> and and so we learned in the class not to block and then now in the duels we learned uh communication is key <laughs> yeah so uh whatever team puts that all together and puts out a great race that'll be the daytona 500 champions yeah i'm very excited to see the 500 and see what's going to happen and see who's correct Overall, enjoyed the duels, both of them. Uh, they had just about everything, but a bunch of crashes. So, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. We forgot to mention it was a little delayed by the rain. Oh, yeah, it? and that. So, uh, But the racing was so good, I forgot about the, the yeah, first Yeah, forgot all about that. We just uh, had enjoyed watching it. I do not think the Daytona 500 is going to be like that. There's going to be a lot more blocks, a lot more crashes. and Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a mixture between the duels and the clash. So. Or it could just be mayhem all the way through. So Possibly. It's either going to be a train for most of the race, or it's going to be crashes for most of the race. What would you rather have? Well, comment that in the comments below, and we'll see you on our next video. Uh, subscribe for more. We're going to make our fast picks tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, so we'll see you then. Uh -huh.